Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to present to you something very interesting in trigonometry called the inverse function. In this case we're going to look at the inverse sine function. And it's quite often very confusing. In, act in actuality it's actually very very simple. So what do we mean by that? Well here we're familiar with y equals the sine of x. If I give you the function y equals sine of x and then I say what is y equal to when the angle x is equal to pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, you say, oh, I know what the answer is. It's the square root of 2 over 2, which is 0 0.707, right? So we can also write y equals the square root of 2 over 2, which is the exact angle. That's the approximate, uh, the, the exact answer. That's the approximate answer. So the sine of 45 degrees, or the sine of pi over 4, is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, or 0 0.707. But what if we do things in reverse? What if I give you the answer and ask you for the angle? That's exactly what the inverse function is. So I give you the answer. I say the answer is 0 0.707. What is the angle? You go, OK, what's the angle that gives me 0 0.707 when I take the sign? You go, oh, the answer is pi over 4 or 45 degrees. So x equals 45 degrees or x equals pi over 4 gives you the exact same result. So again, the way the inverse function works is I give you the answer, and you're supposed to guess the angle. So it puts things in reverse. That's why we call it the inverse sine function. Now, what does it look like when we graph it? Well, again, here we have the function y equals the sine of x. x is the angle. y is the value of the function when you plug in a certain angle. So when you take the inverse of the function, you're looking for the angle, and you're giving me the result of the function, the original function, the original sine, fu sine function. So, for example, if I give you... Uh, the arc sine or the, the inverse sine of y equal to zero. You say, okay, at what value does the sine is the sine equal to zero? For what angle is the sine equal to zero? Oh, it's for zero. So when when pi is, when uh, the angle is zero, I get sine of zero is zero. Or if the angle is pi, if I take the sine of pi, I get zero as well. So for, therefore, you can say, if uh, here's another example. So I take x is equal to the arc, the inverse, sometimes I say the arc sine, that's another way of saying it, but the inverse sine of 0, then you can say, well, x can be equal to, let's see, x can be equal to 0, or x can be equal to pi, or x can be equal to 2 pi, or x can be equal to 3 pi, and see, there's an infinite number of answers. We can just keep on going. For every angle, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, so forth, we get the sine of that angle is equal to 0. So that's how we do things in reverse. You give me the answer, and I give you the possible angle. And you can see in this case, there's an infinite number of possibilities. So here's the sine function. And let's say I'm looking for the values for the angle when the sine is equal to 1. Well, notice that when, uh, when the value is 1, the angle is pi over 2. Or uh, this would be, uh, let's see, pi over 2. This would be pi. This would be 3 pi over 2. This would be uh, 2 pi, this would be 5 pi over 2. So you can see that when I have pi over 2, the value, the function is 1. When I have 5 pi over 2, the function is 1. When I have, let's see, when I go over here, uh, that would be uh, minus 3 pi over 2. The function is 1 again. So you can see for an infinite number of values, if I plug in an infinite number of angles, I get the same value over and over again for the function. I get y equals 1, y equals 1, y equals 1, and so forth. So again, to find the inverse, what you're doing is you're looking for the angle that is appropriate to, to the particular value of the function. So how do we grab that as a function? Hmm. So what we realize is since there's an infinite number of repeats, on the vertical axis now, we're going to get x. That's going to be the angle. And on the horizontal axis, we're going to get y, which is the value of the function. So we've put things in reverse now. So when the angle is negative pi over 2, so go here, negative pi over 2, my function is at negative 1. So my value for y is at negative 1. So negative 1 would be right here. So when the angle x is minus pi over 2, the value here for y is minus 1. And when I come over here and my angle is pi over 2, which is over here, when the angle is pi over 2, the value of the function is equal to 1. So that's negative 1, that's 1, and so I'm over here. And so I know that my function runs between this point and this point, and I know it goes to the origin because when my angle is 0, my function is 0. So I go over here, and notice that initially it, ch it changes quick. The value of the function changes quick. 
goes like this. This is what it looks like. Yes. And then if we were to continue the function, it would go like this. And then you realize it's no longer a function because if I do the vertical line test, you can see that the line would cross the function twice and that's therefore no longer a function. So for this to be a function, we have to limit it for values of the angle between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and that will then represent the inverse function. So we cannot go beyond that. So this is kind of the limiting factor right here, and this kind of a limiting point right there. There. So it falls between those two points. And that's what we call the inverse of function. So here we can say that x is equal to the inverse sine of y, and that's how we graph that. And then we have the relationship. So you give me any value of the function, and I will give you the value of the angle. If you give me 0, the angle is 0. If you give me uh, pi over 2, the value is 1. If you give me minus pi over 2, the value is negative 1, and so forth. So that's how we do that.